Oh, what a year it's been for golf balls. We've had illegal straight flying golf balls, we've had dimpleless golf balls, we've had crazy dimple golf balls. And now, now Wilson couldn't even be bothered to paint this one, the world's first ever raw golf ball. Let's do it, and let's do it now. Hi everyone, James Robinson here guys. First things first, first things first guys, I would like to warmly welcome you all back to the channel or to the channel if you are new to the channel. Guys, if you are new to the channel, please take two seconds, hit that subscribe button below. It helps me out, it helps grow the channel, but it also means you're not gonna miss any of the great golf related content I bring to you guys every single day. Also make sure you give that notification bell a quick ring, that way you definitely won't miss the videos. A lot of people are saying they're not getting notified at the minute. In today's video, we're talking, um, I mean, we're talking paint or lack thereof. Now I took these golf balls outside just to show you the kind of, actually how they really look and to feel, the feel really almost matte like, but not matte like. These are of course the new Wilson Staff Model and Model R golf balls. They are a new four piece golf ball brought to us by Wilson and they are a premium urethane ball with a lovely soft unpainted cover. Now the reason why these covers are unpainted and I can't quite get my head around this. I don't know if it's just a Wilson thing or if it's a golf industry thing. So guys, real quick side note today, I am giving away a dozen each of the brand new Wilson Staff Model and Model R golf balls because ultimately, my opinion doesn't matter in these videos. It's your opinion that matters and I want to give you guys a chance of reviewing them for yourself. So all you have to do guys, you have to be a subscriber to this channel. So if you haven't yet, make that plunge, hit that subscribe button below, ring the notification bell for me, then you won't miss the uploads that I do every single day for you. Leave a like on this video and comment below, um, raw. Comment below raw, R-A-W, and you will be in with a chance of winning these brand new Wilson Staff golf balls to test for yourself. Also, I must say one of the most pleasing things in the world when you take these out is how they've put the boxes together. I don't know why that makes me so happy, but it, it does. What if we go, I mean, that's like, <laughs> Well, let's get back to the video. But it does explain it pretty well in the box here. Basically, if you put UV light on golf balls, it shows imperfections in the paint. That makes dispersion and spin a little bit more sporadic. So we're gonna test that today here in the studio. And when we talk golf ball paint, really there's only one ball we should compare this against because when we talk paint, um, it's covered in paint. Now, obviously I would rather do this test outside, but we can't get outside at the moment with golf courses being closed. So we're gonna do the testing here. If you do wanna see these golf balls outside, make sure you do get in those comments below and let me know. Two thousand, two and a half thousand likes and we'll get these outside. We'll play some golf with them and we'll see if it helps me keep, because apparently all these four lefts haven't been because of me, it's just been bad paint jobs. So basically I think this test does rely on how good the paint job is on the other golf ball that we're using, pretty much. So we're gonna test a mid iron, we're gonna test six iron, we're also gonna test some drivers. We will look at numbers, but mainly we're looking at dispersion. We'll start with the unpainted ball and we'll jump in and out of it. Um, I mean, the lovely numbers, but it's... Um, damn it. So looking down at this golf ball, it does look a little bit different. I can imagine that actually it does stop the glare from the sun, which would be a nice thing. Obviously white golf balls can glare up quite easily. It feels soft enough as well. And that's, um, that's why we're using the unpainted golf ball. That's miles better, I think. I think that's how it works, I'm not overly sure. Right, let's go. Oh. Right, let's go one more unpainted, then we'll go painted again, then we'll switch it round again. That was a better golf swing actually. Maybe it's not the paint job. Maybe it's the nut job on the end of the clubs. That's moving again, that's no good. Mm. Maybe it's, um, maybe the four less were my fault. I always thought I could just put it down to the ball. They do feel great though, they feel good, they sound good. I would worry about them scuffing a little bit. I think sometimes the paint layer is the protection layer. I'm sure Wilson have thought of that. Um, and they do actually look quite, uh, quite cool, don't they? Let's go TP5. So this golf ball is now covered in paint. 
So how perfect is that paint job? Is this going to go all over? The I've confused myself now. Have I missed the point here? I don't, th I don't think I have. Again, a little bit left, but we can forgive that. You see, and I don't really want to be kind of reviewing a TP5 pick now because I feel like I've done that till, uh, till the cows come home. Maybe it's one of those where we know in golf that margins can be that small, margins can be that precise. So if it saves us a couple of shots over a season due to these imperfections, it would be interesting to get an ultraviolet light on them, actually. I need to call Liam Harrison, I know he's got one. See, they're all a little bit left, but they're all, they could pretty much flow up for a blanket over them. That obviously is me, I'm not having the, well, actually, maybe it is it's just a paint job that sent them over there. I mean, I'd take those as, as averages. Right, we're gonna go back into the world of unpainted, unfinished, raw, you could call it. That's what I might title this video, actually. The world's first ever raw golf ball. And I really like the alignment aid as well. I really like that uh, Model R alignment aid. I think that's fantastic. Chris would like that as well. Definitely gives you a really different feel in your hands. It almost feels matte-like, but it's not matte-like. It's That's a really terrible way of describing something. It almost leaves like a residue on your hands. This must be what urethane feels like. I've always wanted to know what urethane feels like, and now I know, so thanks, Wilson. Wilson! Been watching too much Alex Etches, I think. Just peeling a little bit. See, that is my shot though, isn't it? It's just peeling a little bit right to left. See, I'm not dissatisfied with all these. I don't feel like it's changing my world. And I do feel like, hold that thought, hold that thought. That was a terrible strike. I do feel like with it having that kind of raw finish on it, they would, you know when they get dirty and you, I feel like they're not going to get as, as clean again, like it is a lovely kind of matte white finish, stop saying matte because it's not matte. It does feel like it's going to, once you get that grass effect on it and the mud in there, I don't know how it would clean. It's already starting to scuff a tiny bit as well. Right, last shot with this, then we'll rifle through some TP5s and then we'll get driver out and have some fun. There we go. That's the shot. Raw, raw emotion. Because <laughs> I've hit a straight six iron. Right guys, I'm not gonna bore you too much with this. Let's fire through three more six irons. Oh, stop it. There must be maybe a picks off in the paintwork or something there, because that's, that's not great, is it? Why can't I swing like that every time? so much better right that's it for the six irons let's go big dog and let's start with the glass of raw emotion what films that off hit those comments below if you know what films that's off and i'll tell you at the end it's one of my favorite films foxy if you're watching you'll know it straight away in fact thinking about it i think he just says glass case of emotion not raw emotion so the joke's redundant but right raw golf ball meet tailor-made sim just don't go left I'll tell you what, that, um, that surprised me. Back to the world of seriousness for a second, that's not bad at all. Quite happy with those for numbers and the dispersion. Um, maybe we've found a new golf ball for 2021. <laughs> Now, I started this video as a bit of a laugh and a joke, but actually, these numbers are, uh, these numbers are pretty impressive. Um, this is kind of turning into a more serious golf ball review now, and they're, um, they're very, very, very pleasing. Right, we're going to speed through some, oh, some more. See, it slips out of your hands, there's no paint on it. We're going to speed through some more, and then we're going to have a look. We'll have a look at the numbers as well, but 
Tell you what, Wilson must be saving a fortune on paint as well. And when I said about the ball getting dirty, obviously we're inside now. And with us using these dots on here to register all the spin rates and things like that, you always hit the ball in the same place. Now, if you have a look at that where I've been hitting the ball, it's starting to just lose its colour ever so slightly. I'm sure it might come off with a good clean, but I imagine out on a golf course, unless you're playing lift clean and place, it might get a little bit annoying. Better change that as well. That's a new one. All right. And just so you all know, I now have a new excuse for when I hit one that way. Terrible paint job, whatever ball it is. We're just gonna hit five each with the driver because I think that's more than enough to have a look. I'm really looking forward to doing this test outside now, by the way. Oh, that's not the one we wanted. Held on a bit. Right. Two more now, that was a great swing actually. Two more now with the Wilson Staff Model R, Model Raw I'm gonna call it, probably is what it stands for. If I'd done more research I'd have known, but yeah, Model Raw. And hopefully we can continue that rich vein of, of form. It's still strange looking down at it, it almost now looks cream. I don't know if that's the lighting in here, I bet it probably is. That's an absolute bullet and it's not moving in the air. I tell you what, I know I misstruck a few of the TP5s, but this is gonna be a really interesting batch of numbers, which look coming into it, I weren't even bothered about looking at. Is it the raw finish? Is it the lack of paint? Is it the placebo effect? Because these are definitely straighter as well. Obviously that's down to the golf swing. I'm well aware of that. Last shot. Somehow, I don't think it'll be my last shot ever with this ball, though. Oh, maybe it will after that. Oh, oh. <laughs> that's terrible. <laughs> well, that was a late shout. I've killed someone over there. Right. Just when you feel like you've got your dispersion in, you're thinking, this ball's the answer. I'm swinging better. I'm... Raw golf balls, no paint. Take a look. Now, this test is mainly about dispersion and we're not gonna start with drivers because that's a really interesting bit. So I'm gonna make you wait for that. We're gonna go six irons. Normal ball, six iron, I've hit six of them. That's pretty standard. Never really hit any irons right. I always just kind of turn it a little bit too much. That's mainly down to kind of swing path and obviously club face angle as well. What about the raw golf ball? Did that help? Did it help or are they exactly the same? I suppose as, as dispersions go, so this is raw, normal. Raw, normal. Very similar, but you've probably got to say that the raw ball takes it. I think if we say if that is down to the paint job or the lack thereof of the ball, we're probably clutching at straws here. I don't think Wilson are claiming that you're going to hit straighter shots every time. I think they're claiming maybe the odd shot that just kind of deviates in the air, maybe, that you're not quite sure what's happened to it. We want to look at the drivers, don't we? Now, drivers is interesting. So there's the normal driver. I actually hit one right as well, which I don't know where that came from. But I do feel like I've been swinging well today. Um, yeah, it's not bad, that, is it, with driver, really? So there's the normal ball. And there's the raw ball with driver. Now, apart from that last swing, where I probably just lost a little bit of concentration, to be honest. Oh, maybe it will after that. <laughs> That's terrible. Well, I was really happy with those shots. Again, I'm gonna say that's down to the swing mechanics and down to me concentrating maybe a bit more. But one thing I really enjoyed were the numbers. So, so as you all know with the driver, I usually carry the ball around 275, 279 carry, 273 carry with the normal ball. That is the TP5. Um, I'm assuming that's probably a bit high spinning, 2591 as opposed to 2213. I do use a TP5X normally. Um, 285 total, 276 total, six irons, only one yard in it, and average total exactly the same, and spin rates with the six irons pretty similar as well at 5.3 and 5.1. So all in all, really, we've put this new Wilson Model R golf ball up against one of the best golf balls in the market in the TaylorMade TP5, albeit the PIX version, and it's held its own. It's not just held its own, it's really, really done pretty well. 
Do I think it's going to help you hit straighter shots? I think there's definitely a, an element of raw marketing in that, mind the pun there. But I do think it's something different, and I always welcome things different. I know Mizuno do those micro dimples to, for, again, there's a video on that, so I'll put that in there, but basically for lower swing speeds to help you get more height, more trajectory, more distance. That's great. I think that's, there's definitely a market for that. Is there a market for this? Potentially. There's probably also a market for this. Wait. Is there a market for this? Potentially. I'm not going to do that whole scene again. This is the Model R, and that's just the model. Model. I think basically all Wilson have done is make a pretty good four-piece golf ball that tall players can use, that good golfers can use, and then they've got one with a bit of a story behind it as well. Looking at it, it felt good, it sounded good, it performed good. I can't wait to get it out on the golf course, actually. A lot of people think Wilson should stick to making basketballs and tennis balls, but um, not me. These are good. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Really hope you've enjoyed that. If you have, please make sure you do smash that subscribe button below. Ring that notification bell. Leave us a like. Uh, hit those comments below, would you? See you tomorrow. Bye.